Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to discuss again one of the newest questions on the IELTS speaking exam. Questions which will be given, well, which are being given like June, July, August speaking testers. And I got this question from the website called IELTSSpeakingSuccess.com. So before we dive into the main content of the video, let me briefly tell you about myself because there might be some new subscribers who don't know me very well. I am Gloria Muzaffarva, an English teacher from Uzbekistan. And to show you my current level of English, I want to quickly show you my all certificate. This is my all certificate. As you can see, I'm from Uzbekistan and these are my current test results. So, thank you very much. Now, let's continue to the main part of the video, the question. Describe a recent goal you set yourself. A very interesting question indeed. Questions about goals and about targets often appear in the IELTS speaking exam. That's why it's essential to prepare at least one answer on such topics. We have four sub-questions. You should say what it is why you wanted it and what you did to get your goal and finally you need to explain how you felt about it these are my notes you know that you're given one minute to prepare your answer in part two and it's a good chance for you to take quick notes and to plan what you're going to say in this part so i'm going to talk about starting running in the morning i did it to become healthier and I set a timetable and started following it in order to get this, uh, to realize this aim. And as a result, I felt more energized than before. So in my speech, I'm going to expand on these four points. I will be speaking about them in more detail. So a goal that you set yourself. This is the script of my speech. As you can see, I've all written down the words of my speech, the script of my speech. Now, at the same time, you'll be listening to my speech and reading it. And it really helps you to understand my speech more easily. So, ready? Let's start. One of the recent goals which I set by, my, by myself, myself was getting into the habit of running in the morning. Uh, during quarantine, I suffered a lot from lack of physical activity. Uh, most of the time, I used to sit at home in front of a computer or a phone screen. As a result, I became very passive and hardly completed my daily to-do lists. It affected my mood as well. I was somehow bad-tempered and moody. Oftentimes, I wouldn't do anything but scroll on Facebook or TikTok and end up having eye strain. My daily routine was also upset because I would go to bed very late and wake up late in the morning. Not only physically, but also spiritually, I suffered a lot as I often felt guilty of wasting my time. Thus, I set a goal of going for a run in the morning. I create a step-by-step -step plan to achieve my target. Uh, rather than changing my daily routine dramatically, I made small changes like getting up 15, 20 minutes earlier than I did the previous day and running or just walking in the open air for about half an hour. Uh, in the beginning, it seems like an arduous task. I will find it hard to leave my bed and couldn't contain the temptation of taking my social networks a lot so at times I simply I simply gave in a hot breakfast which included oatmeal and dairy products followed by my favorite cup of morning coffee is what helped me tremendously eventually I started getting used to it and my productivity started increasing I felt that I was more energized and my mind became more fresh I felt happier and even proud because I could take control over my body and lessons. So this is the end of my speech. Now, as you can see, I have highlighted some words and expressions in red. These are vocabulary items which I'm going to explain and some of them in blue. These are grammar features which, also, which will also be explained in the speech. So let's start words and expressions. Get into the habit. To get into the habit, it means to start a habit. For example, 
I'm trying not to get into the habit of always having biscuits with my coffee. So if you get into a habit, you start this habit. I wanted to get into the habit of running in the morning. I wanted to start a habit of running in the morning. Bad tempered. Bad tempered is an adjective and it describes a person who becomes angry and annoyed easily. So example, she is very bad tempered in the mornings. Moody is another adjective which is used to describe a person and if it's a, neg it's a negative one, it means this per person is often unfriendly because he or she feels angry or unhappy. Example, a moody teenager or I became more moody in this meaning. I strain is another word I use it to describe changes in my body. Eye strain, it's tired and painful eyes as a result of too much reading, looking at a computer screen and others. So eye strain, it's a pressure on your eyes. Other words, arduous, arduous pronunciation. Arduous, it means very difficult, needing a lot of effort and energy. Example, an arduous climb, an arduous task or an arduous journey. Temptation is one of the negative words which I use in my speech and temptation it's something which makes you want to do or have something that you know you shouldn't. Like temptation is something negative. You know that you shouldn't do it but you really want to do it. Example, he knew it was wrong to steal but the money just lying there was too great a temptation. So he knows that stealing is bad. He knows that he shouldn't have stolen, but there was money just lying and it was a great temptation for him. Like he, he couldn't help uh, stealing it. Or the example which I used in my speech, like I couldn't contain my temptation. I couldn't control my temptation of checking my social network a lot in this meaning. Giving, it's a phrasal verb, which means to accept that you have been defeated or agreed to stop competing or fighting. So when you're giving, you stop trying to achieve something. You stop trying to, you stop making an effort to achieve something. Example, you will never guess the answer to giving. So it means, will you accept defeat in this meaning? Hearty is a, an adjective which can be described, um, like which can be helpful to describe foods and meals. And hearty, it means large foods in large amounts. Example, we ate a hearty breakfast before we set off in this meaning. Now let's discuss grammar features used in this speech. I use it a lot of these phrases like use it to and would in my speech because I talked about the past experience. I talked about what I did during the quarantine peri period. Well, quarantine period still didn't end completely, but still I'm talking about what happens what happened a month ago. That's why I use it, these phrases like use it to and would. Use it to and would. Uh, these, um, these phrases means that something was true in the past, but it, it no longer happens. Use it to, especially this is uh, used a lot and it means this thing happened and it was true in the past. It happened before, but it, uh, it doesn't happen anymore. Example, she used to live in Glasgow. She used to live in Glasgow, it means before she lived in Glasgow, but now she doesn't live in Glasgow. And would, would also very similar to used to. It means uh, something happened often or always in the past, but we don't know if it still happens or not. Would is more restricted, more limited. It's used with only action verbs in positive statements. Example, he would always turn and wave at the end of the street. Like he would always turn and wave. It means he did it. Often, he did it always. And one more grammar feature which uh, I want you to pay attention, which I want to highlight in my speech, this is making a complex subject and a simpler verb to make complex sentence in English. Like, because complex grammar plays a role in your speaking and writing. It shows your level of grammar. That's why you were recommended, your advisor, to use different grammar structures in your speech use them naturally in your speech and one of the ways of using complex sentences using complex grammar in your speech is to make a complicated subject to make a long and complex subject 
but verb should be a simple one. Example, the example which I used in my speech is this one. A hearty breakfast which included oatmeal and dairy products followed by my favorite cup of morning coffee. So this long phrase, more than 10 words, this long phrase is the subject of the sentence. So in this sentence, I have a very long and complicated subject, but it really sh shows my current level of grammar. It's what helped me tremendously. As you can see, my verb is much, much, much shorter than the subject. And this is one of the ways of making a complex sentences in English. Thank you very much for watching the video. This was all which I was going to explain to include in this video. If you liked the video, please support me by subscribing to my channel and hit the like button and the notification bell in order not to miss next videos. Also, share the video with people who are studying for IELTS. Once again, thank you very much for watching the video and see you in the next videos.